Whether you're thinking of buying your first high quality backpack or you're adding to an already sizable collection, you won't want to miss today's video. We're going to be taking a look at the best EDC backpacks for every budget. So if you've got $10 or if you've got $1,000, we're going to see what kind of backpack you can pick up. So check your bank account and fill in your credit card details. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Roland from Rush Faster, and at Rush Faster, we do guides and walkthroughs, bringing you better gear and better ways to carry. Today's video is sponsored by our new US store, rushfaster.com, but more on that later on. So the widely accepted wisdom is that you get what you pay for, and that's often true, but then you can also blow money on a dud product if you're not careful. And that's just not with bags, that's just with any product. So a little bit of knowledge can help you make the right purchasing decision and spend your hard earned more wisely. Now the bags that I'm gonna show you today do tend to get a little bit better as they get more expensive to a point and more on that later on but it doesn't mean that you can't get a good quality backpack for like 50 bucks we've got a lot to get through so we're going to move very quickly this is not a deep dive by any means but before we get stuck in a quick caveat we are a global community here on youtube we all live in different countries we shop in different currencies and the cost of a backpack might be different depending on where you live or where the bag was manufactured so for the sake of consistency we'll just use us dollars for this guy okay so for under ten dollars you can pick up the ikea piv ring it's 3.99 and for that you get a bag that is 100 percent polyester with 90 percent of it made from recycled polyester it's 7.5 liters holds a 14 inch laptop it has a mesh compartment on the outside so you can stick your water bottle or maybe a hat and it's got adjustable shoulder straps four bucks like you could do you could do worse okay under fifty dollars it's the Jansport Super Brake Plus. It's really the only option. It's $38. It is a classic. It appeared in our backpack classic videos. It's, it's rocked up in popular culture. Spider-Man uses one. You've seen it, you know it. It does have a bit of a school bag vibe, that's for sure. But they're really fun. You can customize it, you can, you can draw on it. It's so cheap, it doesn't matter if it gets scuffed or if you wanna put a patch on it. Whatever, you know, it's $38. And it has a bit of history behind it as well. It was one of the first backpacks in America to get kids to stop from holding their books in their hand and wearing them on their back, which I think contributed to less back problems for children in the US, so that's really cool. It's got a lifetime warranty, so if your budget is only 50 bucks, Go a Jansport. Okay, so under $100. Now this is where things get a little bit more interesting because you can pick up the Fjord Raven Kunken, which is again, a, a, it's a bona fide classic. And it shares a similar history with the Jansport in that it was one of the first backpacks in Sweden to be used by school students. So it sort of alleviated some back problems. They started carrying their books to school. And that's sort of how it fits into the popular culture discussion. But beyond that, it's sort of been adopted by almost the alternative or the subculture. And it's one of those things that you can really make your own. There's so many different colors. You can, you can add to it by drawing on it or embroidering on it. They're a lot of fun, they're kind of cute. And while the straps are a little basic, I think that the interesting material makes up for that. This is Vinylon F, which is a material that is water resistant, but it doesn't actually require any coating because what happens is that the fabrics react to moisture. So when they get wet, they swell up and sort of lock out the moisture. So that's a really cool little fact about the Fjord Raven. I love the Fjord Raven, I think everybody does. I think it's well worth the price. But if the Fjord Raven Kunken isn't for you, well then maybe you want to check out the North Face Borealis. North Face is of course a very well-known and well-liked brand and the North Face Borealis comes in at $99. It's 28 litres so it does have a fair bit of room if you need a slightly larger everyday carry and there is some good organisation on the inside as well. There's also this bungee system on the outside of the pack which is really handy if you want to attach some bigger items, maybe some shoes or a yoga mat. It has two water bottle pockets, a decent harness system and while this is the men's version here they also have a women's version and the Borealis is, it's kind of a classic. Okay, moving Moving on, so what can you get for $150? Now, if that is your budget, things start to open up a little bit more, you get more options. We start to see the packs have a little bit more refinement, some boutique-ish brands sort of start making their way to the list. And the first one is the Bellroy Classic Backpack. It's 20 litres and it comes in at $149. Now, this is a favourite of many carry enthusiasts and I think it's because it just looks like a backpack. It's very simple, it's very streamlined, there's no fuss. It's a very handsome bag and whatever you're wearing, whatever you're doing, it's it's gonna look good. You know, it comes in a wide range of colors, some, some different material options as well. The material feels really good, not just on the outside, but also on the inside. The straps have a nice firmness to them. 
without being sort of overbearing. It's just a sleek backpack. A similar take on the classic bag look is the Able Carry Daily. It's 20 litres, which I think is spot on for an EDC bag. And the Able Carry Daily retails for $138. This has everything that you need. It's got a good laptop compartment with some nice padding. The back panel and the harness system on this bag are really good. There is quite a large external access pocket on the front, which I like. It's sort of vertically oriented. This bag's big trick is that it has special structure around the base of the bag, which allows it to keep its shape even when it's empty. So you always get that nice sort of backpack style silhouette. The fabric doesn't drape or fold in any sort of like non-pleasing way. So it stays looking good. The final bag that I want to share with you under $150 is the Air Day Pack 2. It's only $140. What I like about this one is it's sort of unique. It's got a unique look. You get that sort of polyurethane coated shell on the outside, which gives it a bit, it sort of gives it a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a little bit of spunk or something like it's got a bit of attitude to this bag but this is a great bag especially for tech it has some really good organization there's a front admin panel so if you do have lots of little bits and pieces and you want to use the inbuilt organization in the backpack this is a great bag for that and then it has a really solid laptop compartment as well you're not gonna have any problems carrying around a laptop and an iPad in there now it's only 14.8 liters so it's not the kind of bag that you want to be uh, using as an overnighter or with your gym gear on the way to the office it is strictly an EDC bag bag and probably even more specifically a specialist sort of office bag because it has all of that sort of tech and, and laptop organization so that's what it's made for and it really excels. Okay before we get on to the big guns today's video is sponsored by the new Rush Faster US store. That's right we've just launched a new US website stocking lots of the gear that we talk about on this channel. That means that if you're in the US and you're watching our videos you can now choose to buy directly from Rush Faster which helps support the channel even more. Alongside our Rush Faster branded gear we're also launching the US web store with a selection of our favorite brands with many many more to come so go check out rushfaster.com and keep us in mind next time you're picking up some new gear okay on to under $200 so if you have $200 to spend you're gonna you're gonna get a little bit more for your dollar we're talking about in terms of like features and maybe materials the first one we want to talk about is the Alpha 19er Evade 1.5 full version this is an absolute beast of a bag and it wouldn't surprise me if this was a little bit more expensive than it actually is because you are getting so much for your money and it is really built like a tank. In Australia we say if something is really high quality we say it's built like a brick shit house. The Alpha 19er Evade is built like a brick shit house. It's about 25 litres so it is a good size but you will find that a lot of that capacity is actually in the organisation. So you have a really comprehensive front admin panel which is actually removable by Velcro so if you don't want it in there you can just rip it out and not use it, that's great. There's lots of hidden pockets around the place. There is a main compartment which does have quite a bit of capacity so if you wanted to use this as an overnighter or a, a, a sort of a short stay travel bag I think that this would be fine for that. There's also a really good laptop compartment with lots of padding, lots of space for all of your tech and then of course there's all the external attachment points, there's this sort of bungee cord for attaching bigger bulkier items, a jacket, a tripod, whatever you like, there's external water bottle pockets with some nice stretch to them. This is a heavier bag but it is made of really tough burly materials and it also offers a lot of features. So the trade-off for that weight is a lot of features, it's great material and it's a really high quality bag. Another great EDC bag that comes in at just under $200 is the Evergoods Half Sip 22 or CHZ22 or Cheese22, whatever you want to call it. It's $199. Evergoods is Evergoods. They make really good stuff. It's really nice and it performs very well. It's got a big capacity, so it feels a lot bigger than it's 22 litres, and it's just a big open space. It's a half sip, so you open up the flap, you just dump everything that you need in there, and you're good to go for the day. You don't have to think too much about your organisation. There is some organisation on the inside. There's a top zippered pocket with quite a bit of capacity. This is affectionately known as the rhino horn. So all of your smaller bits and pieces can go in there, a pouch, a camera, your wallet, whatever. But then there's also a nice quick access external pocket for your sunglasses, keys, phone, whatever else you need to access on the go. And I really liked these straps and this harness system. Evergoods does have quite an interesting shape. I think that they put a lot of thought into the design of their straps to make them really comfortable and I always found that the that the CHZ was a really comfortable pack to carry. Another thing that Evergoods has done a lot of work on in the CHZ22 is the back panel so they've updated it to be more breathable, softer on the back and just overall more comfortable to carry. Okay moving on to the under 
dollar price range and this is where we have one of my favorites the Tombin Synapse 25 liter that comes in at $243 so the Synapse is kind of legendary as an EDC bag but then also as like a travel bag at 25 liters there is quite a lot of capacity it has a really big main compartment with nothing in it except for a stretch pocket just to sort of give you some options to separate your load or to put some shoes in there or a laptop there isn't really a dedicated laptop compartment in there Tombin does sell one which you can pick up it's called the cache and it comes in all different sizes depending on your laptop the great thing about the synapse is it has so much good organization built in on the front of the bag you actually have five pockets there's a really big pocket down the bottom which I've been using for things like my tech case or even a jacket two quick access pockets on the side this is where I put all of my quick grab and go stuff my keys my sunnies my phone some pens a smaller quick access pocket on the top and then a big water bottle pocket in the middle of the bag and the water bottle pocket on the middle of the bag is kind of the secret weapon of this bag because it means that no matter how heavy your water bottle is and it is usually one of the heaviest things in your bag it's always going to sit in the center of the bag so it's not going to throw off the weight it's a really clever design the materials in the construction are top-notch one of the best we are getting up there in price so you would expect that and Tombin delivers you can pick a whole range of different colors and fabrics for the interior and exterior of this pack and the harness system with those updated edgeless straps I think that they're one of the best in the game they're just the perfect amount of thickness and firmness and they are really nice. Another bag in this price range is the Mystery Ranch Two Day Assault Pack. Now Mystery Ranch makes a bunch of stuff at all different price ranges, but I've chosen this one because it seems to be one of the most popular among carry heads. I don't have any experience with this bag myself, though I have owned their, uh, uh, their 12 hour assault pack or the smaller version of this bag. And look, it was excellent. The assault packs have a really unique tri-way zip access. So the whole bag sort of opens up like a like a flower, I guess. And then you get all of your organization on the inside of the pocket. So accessing the bag and all of your bits and pieces is really easy. And they have one of the best harness systems on the market, consistently comfortable, very adjustable, nice and thick. They really feel like they hug the body. Adding to that, you get compression straps, molly for attaching accessories, comes in 500D Cordura fabric, YKK zippers, all the trimmings. The two day assault pack is 27 liters and it comes in different sizes for different body shapes, which I think is really cool and really inclusive. But this is a great bag. It's one of those bags that you can just sort of, you can just have in almost any scenario and it's got all the features you need, all the capacity you need, and it's not gonna let you down. Okay, we're moving up in price, the under $300 price range now. There's some interesting ones here. The first one I've chosen is the GWA Citadel Micro. Now this retails for usually around $285. This is a really interesting pack because it's made in small batches that often sells out in a couple of hours. They, they, they do drops, some drops through the Facebook group, some drops that are more readily available to the wider public, and they just go. They have a couple of different variants of their bags, but this is the Micro, and I like this one a lot. Every drop is basically limited edition, so you're sort of gonna end up with a pack that you're not gonna see around, which I think is part of the appeal of this but otherwise it's just an extremely useful everyday bag I really like the pocketing here the way that they've got so much external access it just makes sort of grabbing what you need or just sort of like throwing something into your bag really easy the straps are good the materials are really nice I like this one that I have with the sort of maroon and then the yellow on the inside. I think that that's not something that you see every day. It's quite unusual. So the GWA Citadel is a little bit tricky to get your hands on, but if you do have a budget of $300 and you want to get something that's a little bit different, a little bit special, a little bit unique, then it's worth looking into. Okay, now another backpack that comes in at under $300 is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack. Now this one's $280. Peak Design are very well known for their camera accessories and the Everyday Backpack actually makes quite a decent camera backpack. Pack. And the reason is they have these flex fold dividers which can be sort of inserted any way that you like, any configuration that you like into the main compartment of the backpack. And then you can put your camera lenses, your camera bodies, whatever you need. It can all go in the main compartment and you configure it however you like depending on your load. Now the way that you access the main compartment on the everyday backpack is either through the top or through the side. So the idea being that you can sort of flip it around in front of your body, zip it open and get to your camera body or whatever you have, whatever you want to get to while you're on the run without putting the bag down, without getting it dirty. So that makes it a very good camera bag, but of course that makes it a very good everyday bag. This is a very, I want to say, technical or futuristic look about it. I think that there's a reason that MKBHD uses one. I think he has like a custom one because they built one for him. I wonder if they'll build one for another YouTuber. 
Anyway, that's neither here nor there. The point is that there's a lot of organization and there's a lot of capacity and a lot of modularity. Now, this one here is the 20 liter one, but it also comes in a 30 liter one, which is obviously quite a bit bigger for bigger loads. It has two water bottle pockets on the side. These are great for obviously water bottles, but then tripods or stands if you're using it in camera bag mode, as well as a tuck away strap system to help you carry those bigger items on the outside. Now there's no doubt that the Peak Design Everyday Backpack is a quality backpack, but at this price you would expect it to be. In fact, as we hit this price and we continue on upwards, you really do have high expectations for the backpacks and they do start to transition into specialist territory. Kind of like the Peak Design Everyday Backpack sort of being a a specialist uh, camera bag but then also an EDC bag or whatever you like bag so keep that in mind as we look at bags that you can get for under $350 and the first one is the legendary GORUCK GR1 that comes in at $335 now <laughs> this is one of those instances where the price has varied a lot over the years, but it's currently on their website at $335. Now the main selling point for the GORUCK GR1 would have to be its construction and its simplicity. This thing is built so tough that they actually use it for rucking events, which is basically where you just fill up your backpack with a load of weight on the back and you go and do outdoor activities, you go for a big hike, you roll around in the mud, you swim in the ocean, you get yourself dirty, you get the bag dirty, you drag it through the muck and then you rinse it off and it's absolutely fine because it's built to withstand the war zones of Baghdad but then also not look out of place on the back of a fashionista in New York. That's at least the mission statement of Jason McCarthy who created GORUCK and the GR1. Now those materials for the most part are 1000D Cordura and number 10 YKK zippers, but they have started making them in a few other fabrics. Fabrics that are a little bit softer and a little bit more comfortable to wear on the body and also less abrasive to clothes. So check those out if you want something that's a little bit softer. But apart from the community that has been built around GORUCK, the GR1 and rucking, I think one of the main reasons that the GR1 is such a great backpack and so popular is its aesthetic. And I think that's unusual for a tactical backpack to have such broad appeal. And that speaks to the simplicity of the design, which is kind of genius in its way. Sort of does everything you need a backpack to do while only doing one thing. And it's sort of just, it's a big space that opens clamshell. That's kind of its only trick. The straps are very comfortable. They're very big and and they hold weight well, but they do take some breaking in, so they're a little bit stiff. So this would probably be for people that like raw denim or, you know, getting tattoos or being beat up or something. You know? There's a bit of there's a bit of no pain, no gain about GORUCK, but I have one that I personally use in high rotation and I, I absolutely love it. Another backpack that you might consider if you have a budget of $350 is the Triple Aught Design Axiom S2. Now this is an update of the Axiom 24, which was very popular. This new version has some updates. It's been streamlined. It's now 19 liters. They do come in at $325. It does have very thoughtful design. There is lots of organization with a great admin pocket at the front. It's highly configurable. There's a sophisticated harness system, lots of padding, with airflow and load lifters. And it's made from durable material with a VX21 shell and really high quality construction. Now I haven't used one of these myself, but I've seen a lot of people in the bag community rave about them and I would love to get my hands on one in the future. Okay, so we're getting into the big spender end of the list. You've got a budget of $400. What can you get for $400? Well, I'd want you to check out the remote equipment Alpha 31. This comes in at $399. This bag actually comes with a user's manual, which is the first time I think I've ever seen a bag come with a user's manual. And the user's manual is really nice. It's really well illustrated. This will walk you through all of the features the use and the maintenance of the pack. This comes with ergonomic shoulder straps and a back panel which are both able to contour to the shoulders and the chest. And all of the body facing panels are shaped to improve airflow. So a good one if sweat or heat is a problem for you. It's made out of EPX 600 fabric from Challenge Sailcloth which is a very durable material. It's 31 litres but it's an expandable roll top so you can max it out at 34 litres. And those materials are water resistant. You also get YKK reverse coil AquaGuard zips. Inside there's lots of organisation. This is a very well-respected and well-made bag. But if that's not your vibe, then perhaps check out the Track Bannock, which comes in at $389. Now, this is a Scottish company, and they are famous for making their bags out of dry, finished wax canvas. This bag is a little bit on the smaller side, 17 litres. I don't think that'll be a problem for most people. You should still be able to fit all of your everyday carry in there. Now, this variant that I'm sharing with you is the one that comes with Fidlocks, and I think that's the way to go. It's preferable to the standard hooks. Those standard hooks can be a little bit fiddly in my experience, 
experience, whereas the Fidlocks, they just work really nicely. The Bannock comes with two water bottle pockets, an A4 document sleeve, double bellows pockets, and an interior zip pocket and a laptop sleeve. So as I said, everything you need for an EDC bag. And I think this has a really sophisticated look. It's a mature bag without looking sort of dull. Okay, if you're willing to part with $500, then the backpack that I would recommend you consider is the Attitude Supply ADT-1. That comes in at $479. Now, I recently checked out the version five or fifth production of this backpack on this channel, so I'll leave a link to that up here. It goes into much more detail. I said on the video, this is the finest backpack that I have ever seen, that I've ever touched. The quality of the materials and the construction, it's so refined. You know, the finishing is just, it's flawless. This is a big backpack though. I think that this goes from 23 liters all the way up to 55 liters with that expandable roll top. But it has one of the most comfortable harness systems that I've experienced as well. So even if you are using it fully packed out of those 55 liter capacity, it's gonna be very comfortable. And as an everyday bag, it doesn't get so big that it's unwieldy. I think 23 liters is completely acceptable as an EDC bag. There's a laptop compartment, an iPad compartment, and a really nice front pocket for all of your little items, which has quite a lot of capacity, and that's accessible externally so that's good. Two water bottle pockets. You could argue that some of these backpacks at the higher end of the price range may not be worth the price that they're asking for, but this backpack, the ATD one, definitely worth it. And finally, if you have $1,000 to spend on a backpack, $1,000 for an everyday carry backpack, then you wanna check out the Valence No Mean Pack from Architrex. Well, it's from Valence, but Valence is part of Architrex. Architrex sort of uses valence. It feels to me like they use it as their sort of R&D experimental arm. Anyway, fortunately this bag doesn't actually come in at $1,000. It's only $800. I couldn't actually find an $1,000 backpack. Good. <laughs> but this is still an expensive pack, but it's a good looking pack. It's very simple, but it has that sophistication to it that I think that you only get with really masterful design. And that's a big part of what you're paying for. The other thing that you're paying for is the materials. This material is impervious to penetration by water molecules. The harness system is apparently quite comfortable despite looking quite simple. There is not a lot of organization on the inside. I think there's just one or two pockets. There is a laptop pocket, but that's very good. Look, it's very nice. It's just very expensive. This is far from an exhaustive list. There are loads of great packs from manufacturers that we didn't mention. Osprey, Cotopaxi, Patagonia, Alpaca, Brown Buffalo, Chrome Industries, Tortuga, Manal, Filson, Moment, Defy, Wandered, Pack, Wanton Craft, Nutsack, Waterfields Designs, Black Ember. We could just keep going, we could keep going all day. But we have made a lot of videos on a lot of those brands, so check out the Rush Faster YouTube channel, or you can sign up to the Rush Faster email newsletter, which is a free newsletter that is delivered every two weeks and features all of the news that you need to know about in the carry space, along with deals on better gear and all of our latest videos. Additionally, we give you the chance to win a lot of the gear that we feature on this channel. So all you have to do is be subscribed to that newsletter and you'll be in the running. So if that sounds like a good time to you, then join the thousands of other subscribers and sign up now there's a link in the description I just want to finish this video by saying that I hope that you found that fun it was a lot of fun to go and look at the price points of a lot of these bags and see what was out there but there was something that became apparent to me and that was that there seems to be a sweet spot where price meets value and it's somewhere between that $150 to $250 mark that's where you start to see considered design excellent material choice useful features and great construction all together I mean the bags outside of that price range are still solid but if you go under then you might start sacrificing on materials design construction or features and then if you go over you're more paying for specialized features or special materials so that's just an observation now a lot of these brands are going to have bags in other price points so if you did see something that you like but it's out of your price range or it didn't suit your need do go and check out those manufacturers because maybe they'll have something that you do like and of course, there are links to everything that we've mentioned in the description below. And if you do make a purchase using some of those links, then it goes a long way to supporting the channel and the work that we do here at no extra cost to you. So we appreciate that. And if you're into better gear and better ways to carry, then hey, make sure that you are subscribed. Maybe even share this video with somebody. If you know somebody that's backpack shopping, say, hey, did you know there's a thousand dollar backpack? But for now, my name is Roland from Rush Faster, and this has been the best EDC backpacks for every budget. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.